I went through like a season where I was like truly confused. I was truly like, God, what am I doing? I'm doing like 50 different things at the same time, trying to figure out which one would stick. And nothing is really sticking. And in my mind, I was just like, what is happening? So whether it's friendships or relationships, it's just really surrounding yourself with people that understand that you're not you're not created for yourself. Mm. There's there's something that God wants to do with you, and you're not just living your life on your own. Knowing the season you are will let you know the people that should be around you oh, in those thousand seasons. Percent. Nowadays, you know, people don't take the enough time to find themselves first before they jump into marriage and looking for justification and purpose in other people. I'm PM, and I am so excited to be having this conversation today. As you all know, at Jesus House DC, our theme for 2024 is created on purpose for a purpose. And we're having a dialogue with some super amazing singles at Jesus House DC, specifically from Ignite. And I can't wait for us to have this conversation. First, um, I'd like to introduce Chisum, who has Whoops. been at ignite for a while now over three years just some thanks so much for sitting down with us today of course thank you for having me how you feeling i feel good i feel fulfilled mommy i'm about <laughs> to trend <laughs> oh, wow okay okay i don't know who you call a mommy but that's fine <laughs> um up next we have a light day you're a lie day, I, I, there's so much I can say about her, but let me just keep it short. She's a leader at Ignite. She's amazing. Aww. She has such a sweetheart, and I can't wait to hear all the nuggets she's going to drop today on purpose. Alide, day, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you. And last but definitely not least, not least. we have Bryant, who's <laughs> also a leader at Ignite, JHDC. He's been with Ignite for some time now, and yeah. he brings the flavor, the Cajun sauce, and all of that good stuff to Ignite. Mm. Brian, how are you feeling today? I'm doing good. You didn't ginger me like you did Lie Day, but I'm, I'm doing well. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't be jealous. I'm doing He's well. also a rep for our <laughs> singles ministry. There we go. There we go. Yes, I am. Well, guys, we're having a conversation about purpose, and I'm just going to get started, if you don't mind. Let's just hop on into the conversation. Of course. As a single person living and thriving in the DMV area, how does being created on purpose for a purpose resonate with you as a single person? I'll start off with Olaide. Wow. Um, <laughs> I guess it kick us off. Great. Um, yeah, I think purpose in your singleness is just is so important, especially in a season where you're like, you feel like you're by yourself, you're still trying to navigate adulthood, you're still trying to navigate relationships and all of that. And so when you put it in the aspect of purpose, it kind of gives you some direction in life. It kind of mm. gives you some guidance mm -hmm. on what you're supposed to do, your next steps, the things that you're supposed to accomplish in this life, um, and the things that God wants you to accomplish. I love that. I love that. Chisel? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, for me personally, just because my name is Jeremiah as well, Oh, one, of my, okay. one of my many names. I, know, I think about the verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, final defense I have for Are you. Are you reading my notes? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I feel like God has a specific plan for every single person that was made. And when it comes to like being created on purpose, it gives you like that like ginger in life. Like It's like, oh, I'm here for a specific reason at this specific time. So I guess it's my job to figure it out with God who created me and then try and make sure I achieve that. Yes, yeah. I, I, I really like that. It's your job to figure it out. Yeah. I love that. If I if I can a little, I want to highlight a quick little point that you brought up about living in DMV, um, and I'm really glad you called that part out because I think one of the things that people who are not familiar with the DMV or don't live in the DMV um, fail to understand is that the amount of I don't want to say temptation, but as living as a single person, there's so many different avenues that you can go. We have a lot of churches, but we also have a lot of nightclubs. We have a lot of, you know, a lot of everything here. Everything yeah. you're looking for, you can find it here, right? So I think one of the biggest things about just to, to what they said, all right, just just making sure that you remember that the, the picture is bigger than what you can see, right? Mm -hmm. Your purpose is not just has to do with you. It's for generations to come. It has to do with people that you may never meet. You know, it's just a, it's a stopping point all along the way. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Bryant. And acknowledging that your purpose has to do with your environment. Yeah, so I'm 100%. glad you brought that up. Yeah. In all honesty, by a show of hands, how many people know what their purpose is already? Can I do like half? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can raise my okay. hand. I can raise okay. my hand. Yeah. Um, and, and for Bryant, since you raised your hand so high, so how high. did you discover your purpose? 
I'm not gonna lie to you. It's actually a very beautiful story. Um, if I might say so myself, but um, <laughs> your story. I was. Uh, you tell us. <laughs> it's it's a couple of years ago. I was actually it was a month of October. So usually with the month of October, November, I like get off of social media and I just kind of fast, right? Because obviously with the level of being from the DMV, having all that temptation here, you have a lot of temptation on social media. So it's my time to kind of unplug. Um, and, oh, shout out to Unplug. You know, can I, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> but no, so I tell my Unplug and I remember I was just laying in my bed and I wasn't even praying for purpose, right? But I just laid there and God really in the month of October speaks so loud to me. Like, you know, there's multiple ways that God speaks, but, you know, through his word, but also like through dreams and a lot of different stuff. But I heard his voice so clearly and it's just like, this is your purpose. And I'm like, wow, like there's something I didn't even ask for. And the thing about it is a lot of people struggle to find out their purpose. People fast and pray and still not figure it out. But it was just almost kind of like a whisper that was told to me at that point in time. Like, you know what? It's almost kind of like, you know, the Bible verse, but this is Joshua. This is the way you walk in it. So that's that's kind of how I discovered my purpose. So for you, it was an audible voice 100%. saying this is your purpose. Yeah, and, and to even add to that, there's only been two times in my life, probably three, that I've only heard God's voice audible. Mm. And the first time was whenever um, I remember crying because I didn't get into school. And I remember God's, God reminded me of a word that I told him was that I wanted to go to school in Texas. And he literally said, but you told me you want to go to school in Texas. I immediately wiped my tears. Like, okay. The next following day, I got admitted to Texas Tech. You wow. know, so those are like the literally like one of the three times or three times that I've heard God's voice audible. I love that. Um, yeah. Because you're right. People hear from God in different ways. Yeah. Alida and Chisong, you were kind of like halfway, <laughs> midway. Yeah. What experiences can you share that got you to the halfway, middle way place of maybe having an idea of what your purpose may be? Can you think of anything that you can share with folks? I mean, Bryant talked about an audible voice, and we know that's not going to be everybody's experience. Mm -hmm. Can you share your experience? Yeah. Yeah, I can go. Um, I think for me, Life has been a little bit confusing just because from a young age, I was kind of good at a lot of things, right? And when you're good at a lot of things, it's hard to be like, oh, this is the one I'm supposed to do. So I thought I was going to be a, a footballer. That didn't quite work out. You know, like I a soccer was, player? Yeah, like a soccer player, okay. yeah, for American people. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought I was going to be an engineer. I'm, I'm now in project management. I thought I was going to be a podcaster. Things. I'm just like, okay, yeah, what exactly are you going to do? You know, So in a sense, but one thing I know that was consistent, though, was the fact that like, everything I did was kind of rooted in Christ. Mm. So even when I was kind of like walking through and not really knowing where I'm going and I'm still in that phase where I'm not like, I don't know where the end is. What I do know is my purpose involves people. Mm. That's something I've learned over the years. You know, I, I used to think it was like maybe I was going to invent something. Maybe I still will. Who knows, right? But I think it's going to be very closely tied to people because I know the things I'm passionate about, Nigeria, people helping the word of God, Christianity, things like that. So I know that it's going to involve things in that realm. Now, I don't know what the specifics are going to look like. Mm. And I think that's where, like, walking with Christ will actually help reveal this because at the end of the day, he made me and he knows why he made me. So it sounds very spiritual, honestly, but it really is what it is. Like, I need to ask him to guide me to yeah. what my purpose will be. And I feel like I begin to unravel with things and I begin to learn more as I go. So I love that you, you know, you, you mentioned asking God because... Our purpose, when you think of purpose, it means like the intent of something. Mm -hmm. The purpose for a vacuum cleaner is to clean, yeah. right? And if you want to know the details of how it cleans and all that, you read the manual, mm. right? And for us, that would be the Bible. But it's so much easier and more fulfilling when you go to the source, when you go to the creator. So yeah, I love wow. that you said, you know, spending time asking God what your purpose is. Thank you for sharing that. Of course. Yeah. Alighty? Yeah, I think for me, it's similar to she's on, I'm kind of like on the path to finding my purpose. I think something that has helped me a lot is just obedience, just ob obeying no, for what sure. God tells me to do when he tells me to do it. On that one part, I'm still working on it. But <laughs> um, just definitely, like, rooting myself in, in, in obeying God. Um, I think when he gives you purpose, he kind of also gives you ways to achieve your purpose. He tells you the things that you do need to do to, you know, to kind of figure out what no, your purpose is. No. Um, and he even puts people in your lives. He tells you, mm -hmm. orders your steps in different ways. Um, he gives you the tools that you need to uh, fulfill and accomplish your, your purpose. So I think for me, it's just being obedient. And even in the areas where I'm like, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this or why I should be doing this. But you created me. You're telling me to do this. So I'm just going to trust in you and be obedient. Yeah. So what I like about what each of you have mentioned, Bryant knowing exactly what his purpose is, Chisholm and Alayde saying you're still trying to figure it out. I, s I feel a sense of like peace, knowing that you're still 
you're not there yet, but you're still on the path. Yeah. Yeah. And I think some people get anxious when they haven't figured it out by the time they hit 21 or 18, mm -hmm. you know, that they haven't discovered their purpose in life. What advice, because you all are so, I don't want to say content, because there's not a spirit of, I don't want to move forward. That's no. still there, but there's no anxiety to get there. So what advice would you tell someone who hasn't figured it out yet? They're in the same place you are, but they're worried that um, they won't find their purpose. Any yeah. advice to them, Chisholm? Yeah, I can definitely go. I think... To be honest, you're looking at me now sounding all calm and everything, but that's not really <laughs> what the day <laughs> that's really that's really not what the day today is. I, I feel like I went through like a season where I was like truly confused. You know, like I was truly like, God, what am I doing? I'm working this job. I'm trying to be like, is this the job that you have for me? Am I might like I'm trying to do my side businesses. I'm like running on like I'm doing like fifty different things at the same time, trying to figure out which one would stick. And nothing is really sticking. And in my mind, I was just like, What is, what is happening? You know, but I think the calmness, you know, like comes from, for one, get it. Because I also feel like at that time, I was in a phase where I was also not like trying to know God deeper. I feel like I was trying to figure everything out by myself. Because, you know, like I always felt like I was that guy that people look up to, whatever it might be, my younger siblings, my friends, that, that, that. So I kind of always have the answers. Cause people come to me for advice. But really, though, like, I think this calmness is. Cal in the last like year and a half or so, I feel like there's just been like a shift in my mentality where I've truly like locked into what God has for me and what He, how He's directing me, and I truly started believing that every step of the way He's ordering it, mm. and I just need to follow, mm. right? So I think that calmness is just coming from a deeper understanding that last, last is not really up to me, you know. Like it, it's really not like I can do everything I want. I can figure out that this is my purpose today and do everything, and I might still be like, yo. I don't really feel fulfilled. I don't really feel like mm -hmm. I'm doing enough. Mm -hmm. I don't feel mm -hmm. worthy, right? But then there's just this kind of peace that comes from above that eventually you're just like, okay, God, take control. If you want to use me, use me. If you don't want to use me, it is what it is. But I know you created me for a reason, so obviously you want to use me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so like just but let me be used by you. And now, so when I do things and things fail, if I take an exam and it fails, if I... If I take the exam again and then I pass, I'm just like, okay, like everything is lining up. If I start this relationship and things like that, if I meet this person, if I talk to this person, to me, I'm just kind of like seeking for what God will have me do in every step of the way. And that takes the pressure off me. So that way I don't feel like I'm carrying my whole life on my hands anymore. It's more like, okay, God, take the will. I'm just here for the ride. And then I'll, I'll do everything in my power for sure. I'm going to yeah. work. I'm going to do the fundamentals, you know, work hard, pray, seek your face fast, do it. Make sure that I'm not being selfish in everything I do. Because I feel like selfishness is also like one of the reasons why we feel very anxious because we're so focused on ourselves. I think I'm rambling right now. But that, that's like a different <laughs> topic. Yeah, you're, make, you're making sense though. You're definitely making like sense a different though. topic. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. more like seeking for what God will have you do. It takes the pressure off you a little bit. So yeah. Thank you. I mean, yeah. I think you summarized it yeah. very well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to move on to the next question, and which is specific to relationships. How does purpose intersect with relationships? And I'd like us to touch on friendships as well as romantic relationships. And I'll leave it up to you. Um, who wants to answer first? Oh, wow. Y'all just looked at me. That's crazy. <laughs> and then, then the camera came to me first as well, too. That's crazy. All right, maybe I'll start off from a friendship standpoint. And Holy Spirit just guided me as I say this. I think that one of the biggest things that I've come to realize, and I, and I, and I, I only try to speak from experience because it's the best way that I know how to speak, um, in my life, um, I have like for for great event, I have two separate groups of friends. Um, I have my family that I grew up with, um, who maybe not the people that you go to for spiritual advice. Um, and then I have like brothers in Christ who I kind of go to for spiritual advice. And I have come to realize that in certain situations, when it comes to purpose, understanding, and and this is, I know we weren't gonna go here, but I know like we weren't gonna share much of our purpose. But I'll keep it really high level, but. My, my purpose that God kind of revealed to me is to be almost kind of like a halfway point between the unchurched and the churched um, to help those who are unchurched see the light in the church. But to answer your question, um, I don't know. I think it's, it's, just, it's overall it's pretty it's, it's 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 difficult in a way whenever you have family members who maybe don't 
see you in the way that you maybe want to be seen or the way that God wants you to be seen. It's like, oh, Brian, you, you grew up like partying and dancing with people, right? I can't see you like preaching and all that kind of stuff. But then you also have some people who are like, you know what, like we each all have our past. We all came from somewhere, right? But it's a transforming nature of God that allows me to cultivate this environment where I'm able to walk forward from a friendship standpoint. And let me quickly jump over to relationships before I pass the mic over. Um, when it comes to relationship standpoint, I think it's very important. And I know we're going to get into this in a deep standpoint, but relationships matter so much, right? We live in a day and age, and I, I know we're not at marriage just yet, but we live in a day and age where people in our age want to get married, they have a desire to get married. And marriage is a good thing, right? But but I believe that nowadays, you know, people don't take enough time to find themselves first before they jump into marriage and looking for justification and purpose in other people. Now, I'm not saying that you can't lead that place, but there is a sense of identity that comes with being single and knowing who you are uh, before you find a person. But um, it, it is it is a difficult thing. And let me let me stop rambling and I'll, I'll pass it over to whoever wants to pick it up now. But, you know, if I chime in, you know, need to. But yeah. It, it, it's a it's a slippery slope to, to walk, especially when it comes to purpose, because it's like you have to intentionally pick people or choose people in your life who will pour into you and be also very, very mindful. I'm sorry, who you pour into and be very, very mindful who pours into you. So. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, just adding on to what Brian said, I mean, when you think of your purpose, this is like your being. This is what sh- your purpose in life is. You're you're created for this one thing. And so the people that you surround it, yourself with must be people that can also pour into that purpose, that can Mm -hmm. help you nurture that purpose, that that can help you excel in that area. Um, So whether it's friendships or relationships, it's just really surrounding yourself with people that understand that you're not, you're not created for yourself. Like Mm. there's, there's something that God wants to do with you and you're not just living your life on your own. And so having those people that can really nurture you in that area, especially in times where you may not be feeling your purpose or maybe trouble in, have trouble in that 100%. area or it's a struggle for you or something, but mm-hmm. people that can continue to help you carry that and, and take you to where God wants you to be. Yeah. Love that. No, I, th- I think those are good. I think just to keep you brief, for the most part, it's there's also like a knowledge of the season you're in in your life. 100%. That's very important, yeah. right? Yeah. And I feel like, knowing the season you are will let you know the people that should be around you oh, in those thousand seasons. Percent. So let's just say, for example, if I'm coming from a past where I was like going out partying all the time and things like that, not to say that, oh, now I need to cut off all my friends that are still in that lifestyle just to be like, oh, now I'm following Jesus and I can't relate with these people anymore. I don't think life has to be that extreme, <laughs> right? <laughs> but because I feel like there's still a way you can shine. Your, it's kind of like what Brian was saying, like being a light to the between the church and your church. church yeah, I'm like yeah. that. That was brilliantly said, you know. And I feel like you kind of abandon your friends in that way, but you also need to know how close you're going to be to those people. Yeah, especially if it's going to be a big temptation for you, mm-hmm. right? So, like, if you struggle with drinking, if you smuggle, with, if you struggle with all these things, like maybe sex and things like that, is you don't want to surround yourself in a place where the temptation is going to be really high to indulge in activities like that but for the most part i think it's also knowing okay where am i going and then when you know that okay you've overcome then you know you can interact in like places like this and be like okay be like jesus that interacted with the prostitutes yep. interacted with the tax collectors and interacted with like he went out to parties and things like that but for the most part he was never changed they were the ones that changed yeah. anytime mm-hmm. they interacted with him so mm-hmm. i think knowing the season that, that you're in in your life now going into romantic relationships knowing where you're going as well is very important right so if you know that you want to be a traveling missionary, probably you don't end up with someone that wants to be going on date nights every single Friday. You know, <laughs> it's like pro- that's like practical things, but I feel like it's also difficult because ultimately, especially f- for someone like me trying to figure out exactly what my purpose is going to look like, I can't necessarily tell you this is exactly what I'm going to be. Therefore, this is exactly who I need to end up with. Yeah. So it's more like walking with God, and I feel like He will guide you along the way as you yeah. go. So then. Now what Brian said before, go to be like, okay, this is the way you walk in it. And then as you walk in it, you walk in faith, but also use discernment and keep talking to him as you go in it. Okay, this is working. And we keep pushing. So I feel like relationships is a level of faith because people also change. And, uh, mm. It's like, I don't know, you, we can get so deep into yeah. it. Yeah. I think the <laughs> ultimate thing is God to help you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I really like the points that you that you, all three of you made. I mean, going back to the living in the world and being in between, you know, I, I really don't think that it is a mistake that you associate with certain 100%. people throughout your life. 100%. You know, if you think about people who are making impacts, they're relatable because they've been there. When you're able to relate to the people who are still there, 
you're able to bring them out. And like you said, ultimately, they will be changed, not you. Because you've been there. You've done mm-hmm. that. You understand it. You know the temptations and all of that. But I really like the fact that you all are not shying away from that and you're hitting it head on. It's it's important to know the different seasons that you're in and the different people who are in your life in those seasons. Yeah. I want us to shift towards romantic relationships. Can I bring up one quick point real yes. quick yeah. as we move on, make that transition? I think one thing that, to, to echo your point, that really hit home, and I'm not going to cry because uh, I'm a big guy, but, you know, on, um, <laughs> talking about the unchurched balance, um, I have someone who's really close to me who, um, you know, obviously has been in the world for a little, long period of time. And I remember this is the same exact person when I first came my life to Christ back in t- 2012, came up to me and was like, Brian, like, you're not fun anymore. Like, you don't party and all that kind of stuff anymore. And it hit home. But it was a, some scripture that really resonated with me, like, don't worry about that. But long story short, yesterday I was with him and he, like so excitedly came up to me. I was like, Brian, guess what? I'm like, what? So I went to church, you know, on crossover service. And mind you, this is somebody that I've known this guy since 93, since I was born. Never stepped foot in church. Wait, you were born in 1993? And I was born in 93. Did that give my age away? I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, this is somebody who has never even smelt church. Like, mind you, I've invited people to church. I've tried to walk the, the, the line to bring people, all that kind of stuff. But it was, you can see that there was so much happiness or joy from him. And it, it touched me. Like, I can't wait to like, actually kind of sit down with him. and kind of Now he's like, hey, they tend to a prayer God and all that kind of stuff. Now, so to your point. It's intentional that we are able to relate to an extent with the unchurched because you don't know what actions one day may catch a snag and yeah. then bring that person back in. But yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing no. that testimony. No. I think it it brings everything home. 100%. It brings everything home. Do you believe that there is a purpose in dating and in marriage? I do. Hundred percent. Marriage is a ministry. I'm not married yet, but I do my fair share. I, I used to live in the, the day and age where like, oh my God, I through hell and high water, must be married by I'm 25. Yeah. I don't know what this magical age that everybody was married I by I was 25. 23, man. Oh, you're 23. <laughs> you haven't been by two years. But I'm not 25 anymore, and I'm not married. Um, but I, marriage is a ministry, and I think one of the most in, impactful things that I kind of alluded to earlier, and I'll just quickly talk about, you know, Genesis. You know, whenever we look at, at um, this guy, who's the first guy? Adam. Adam and Eve, you know, um, before Adam even had Eve, there was a mission, there was a purpose that he had to Mm. just cultivate, you know, to name Mm -hmm. things, have dominion over the land and all that kind of stuff. And then whenever we we read through on in Genesis, whenever, you know, Jesus, I mean, God then says like, you know, the the first thing that's not good is that man should not be alone, all that kind of stuff. And Eve came along, but there is a, a, an importance that one must identify before you get married to understand that marriage is a ministry. We live in a day and age where everyone wants to get married to be on Bella Niger, to you know have all these Instagram likes, to have an amazing hashtag, to come and chop my rice. That's good. But is there substance in the marriage? Like after the rice is finished, after you go back home, is it misery? Are you guys being fruitful? Not just being fruitful, multiplying from a kid's standpoint, but what are, what fruits are you producing? You know, I think we spoke about this like last week, you know, about, you know, different trees that you have and like, are you producing fruit? Right. And I think that marriage is a ministry, yeah. you know, um, and it should be cultivating something. Oh, Thank that's you, good. Brian. That's good. Alighty, what I role does purpose play? <laughs> and Brian talked about marriage, but what about dating before you get to marriage? Is there a purpose um, that's affiliated with dating? Yeah, um, I definitely think so. I mean, even in the dating process, you're getting to know somebody. You're getting to know who they are, their life, their vision, their dreams, where they're going in life. And I think back to what Shisong said earlier, it's it's good to make sure that your where you're going is aligned with where the other person is yeah. going and it's not deviating from where God is telling you to go. So I think when you're weeding people out, when you're getting to know people, there's there's definitely a strong sense of like I, I know who I am, I know who I've been created to be, yeah. I know where God is taking me, and I'm not going to go after anyone that's gonna deviate me from that plan. Amen. Preach and Lighter, mm-hmm. you're not going after nobody. They're coming after you. Let's be clear about that. There we go. There we go. But, you know, there's something you said that just really jumped out to me. Um, it's about uh, getting to know them and collecting data. And I think people try to stray away from dating because it sounds worldly. worldly. <laughs> <laughs> but this is your opportunity to get the tea. Get the tea. You find out what this person is like, how they deal with. I was talking to someone today. And she was expressing to me how, you know, the person she was dating before, she, there came a point in their relationship where he revealed his true colors. And I said, that's the whole purpose of dating. dating. You get to see this person in 
every area of their life. Mm -hmm. Almost every area. Because people, when you're dating, you're, 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 you're grabbing pieces of them. You know, I've been married for 13 years. And Ooh, what amen. I can say is... Amen to that. Thank you. Shout out to Jesus. P-Wall. P-Wall. Hey, P-Wall. Come on. You know, I, I can't say that I discovered something completely different about my husband. Mm. We were friends for a year. We dated for a year. But everything that I'm seeing is a magnified version of what I saw mm. when we were dating. Mm. His comedy is magnified. His outpouring is magnified. His mini- Everything is magnified because now I'm seeing him more often. Yeah. And you don't get to see any of that if you don't date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the whole concept of, you know, I, I'm not for it, you know. I'm not for just praying and just jumping, jumping into, into it and it, say, yeah. God said you're my wife or your husband. <laughs> uh, I need to know how you deal with disappointment. You better run from that. I need to know how you manage your accounts. I need to know how you treat your mother. Hello. Mm-hmm. All these th- different things because they they become magnified when you get married. So yeah. I'm glad you guys talked about that. Chisholm, did you want to add to that? or? No, I think they covered it. Um, pretty well i think the purpose is ultimately i think relationships in general everything about your life really boils down to one thing bringing glory to god mm. so i feel like a, aside from what they said just an easy way to check it is is this thing bringing glory to god is it taking me or is it bringing what's the opposite of glory is it on glory it's not taking away glory from god you know so i feel like if you can check that then it'll be a, it'll be an easy way to just um, know if it's good or uh, right or wrong for you. No. Yeah. So is there a difference between um, discovering your purpose as a believer and mm. discovering your purpose as a non-believer? So as a Christian yeah, and a definitely. non-Christian, what's the difference? Definitely. Um, I think just from, I think your paradigm this is wildly different. Okay, S A T word. <laughs> <laughs> we take over, we take over. What's the <laughs> but, but I think as a believer, ultimately your fo- your focus is Christ, right? Yeah. Like, and that's where like you gain everything. And as a non-believer, you can still get get a lot of tenants from the Bible. You learn a lot of like these good things. But I feel like a lot of the time, it's very self-fulfilling. Mm. That you, like, it's, mm-hmm. you're searching for something that's going to fulfill you. And I feel like that's where that's the difference between the world and us as believers. And that's like the grace and the gifts that we have in salvation because we know that ultimately nothing really fulfills like Christ. Nothing. But the thing is, we still have other things in life that will fulfill you in some way, shape, or form. But not completely. But not completely, right? So sometimes we settle for those things. So when you're not when you're not a believer, even me, when I was technically I've been a believer all my life, but then like I've really, really been a believer, maybe like the last year. Right? <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like a proper believer. And I feel like before then, a lot of the times you're like, okay, I need to get all these accolades. I need to, you know, like be smart, get get A's in school, do good, do well in sports, be nice, whatever it might be. Maybe people <laughs> pleasing, all these things, hoping that it will br- bring fulfillment or it will make you, it will give you some direction in life. But ultimately, when you focus on Christ, then you see the bigger picture a lot of the time, and then. I know we talked about anxiety before and all these things. Like you feel like you feel like the anxiety begins to go away. You know, like all these like little depression and things like that. It goes away because the focus is just not on you anymore. Yeah. You're just like, okay, I'm not necessarily seeking to please myself. I'm seeking to please someone that's way bigger than me. First of yeah. all, he deserves it because he died for me. But that's a different story. <laughs> right, but, <laughs> but it's like you're seeking to please something that's way bigger than you, and then your view in life is just way higher. So when you're going through like little challenges, like I don't really know what my purpose is. Or you're going through things like I just failed an exam. You're just like, well, it's not actually me that's in control. Yeah. I'm going to do my best, yeah. but he's just leading the way. So that's, that's just where I see it. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And you talked about settling, and, and this is a question for everyone. Um, is it possible for you to settle for something lesser than your purpose? Right? Mm-hmm. Let me stop there. Is it possible for you to settle? for walking in a path or walking in a purpose that's lesser than the purpose that God has for you. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, it, it, it reminds me, and I don't know if this was a video that I watched or something along the lines of that, but it was like this analogy where this man was living his life and he thought he was doing everything right according to his standards, you know, and He died, and then, again, this is just an analogy. I don't think this actually happened. But an angel, like, took him around, and flying him around, you know, he started seeing this man. He's like, oh, who is this? Like, this guy who amassed all this wealth and had all this kind of stuff. Like, who is that? Like, this is supposed to be you. 
right? But you settle for something then. So and I think that even when it comes back to relationships, or like singles or is dating, a lot of times they're not like, you know, all in the name of being in a relationship, we're just going to go with that person, right? Without appropriately seeking after, like you said, perfectly dating that person or even just getting to a place where we're able to see who that person truly is, you know, like, hey, are we equally yoked? Are we all that kind of stuff? And I definitely do believe that, you know, it's, it's possible to settle, you know, when it comes to your purpose, um, but it's not something that we, we ought to do because I think that's, I think I'm still answering the question, but I don't think that's super important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, super important. yeah you yeah. answered the question. Okay, yeah. um, to be honest, Alaide, choose some Brian. I can sit here all day yeah. and talk to you all all day. I'm really enjoying this conversation. But I'd like us to round up by giving a word of advice regarding purpose to singles and non-singles who are watching this, but also share a short prayer based on how you're led as it relates to purpose. So, um, Chisum, I'll, I'd like you to start. So you want me to say it and then pray? Or yeah. Do we, or everyone say it? No, I want you okay. to say it, then pray. Okay, yeah. I mean, just small nugget. I feel like one of the first things that God revealed about himself to us is that he's a creator, right? So, he like, and God created the heavens and the earth. So, and I feel like because he put a piece of himself in every single one of us, we are made, we are made to create something. So, you are talking about, do, you, do we settle Sometimes in our purpose, I feel like everyone is made to create something in this world, right? So what that thing looks like, I don't know. So I feel like if you're not creating something, then you're automatically settling. Mm. But you'll find that in Christ. So that would be like my small nugget, like be creative, find community, and contribute to the world, you know, give and be nice to people. But um, but yeah, um, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this conversation that we had. I pray, Lord in heaven, that you shall... Reveal yourself ultimately to every single person that is listening. Because at the end of the day, we can find all these things that look like purpose or that look fulfilling. But if it's outside of you, ultimately, we know that it doesn't really lead to the end that we want. It doesn't lead to the end that we desire. But we know that fulfillment is ultimately found in you. So Heavenly Father, reveal yourself to every single person under the sound of my voice. Let them see you clearly because they, we know that the more we get to know you is the more we get to know ourselves. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let me go to Bryant next. Oh, ladies last. Okay. <laughs> um, I think the nugget that I will probably most likely just want to share with everyone is that it's okay if you don't look like everybody else. Um, I think one of the things that uh, is a hindrance to our generation, and I'm just speaking from a single standpoint, is when your life doesn't look like everybody else's or the next man's life. You know, we go back to the whole thing about us being 25 and married, you know, 27 and kids. You know, me, I'm 30 and I mean, I want kids one day, but not today, Lord, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's something that we as believers, as single believers, need to get the mindset of comparing ourselves to one another. It's good to look upon one another for encouragement, but not to compare ourselves like, oh, I was supposed to be here. Or if I stayed this route, this is where I'd be. But this person is where I'm supposed to be. And it's like, you hinder yourself from doing that. And and my nugget to you is that understand that you were made for a time like this. You know, you're you created for a purpose, on purpose, or I think something like, yeah, there you go. Exactly, right? So don't, let, let's try to move away from comparison. Because I think that's one of the things that cripple us as single believers when we, when we see that. So Heavenly Father, I just want to just commit your children to your hand, Lord, everyone on the side of my voice and everyone who'll be watching this for years to come, oh Lord, to understand that um, we don't need to compare ourselves to anybody else, Lord. You, in the Old Testament, tried your best to relate with man and saw that that was not working, so you sent Jesus Christ to be able to relate with us through relationship, oh God, and we just ask you that we seem to strengthen our relationship with you, understanding that when we see you, we'll be strengthened. Not to compare ourselves to where we could have, should have, would have been, oh Lord, but where you have us. We are made for a time like this. Help us to be fruitful in the time that we are, in the purpose, in the season that we're in, with all that you've equipped, with all that you have equipped us with, oh God. We know that everything results back to you. May everything that we do, our purpose, and everything through, give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 And Alaide, if you could close us out. I think my piece of advice is for anyone out there that is still trying to discover their purpose. They're still trying to find, figure out what God has created them to do and, and who God has created them to be. Um, and I think for that person, I would just tell them that God has called us to do a lot of things Amen. just as Christians. 
Um, he's called us to love others. He's called us to to win souls, be fishers of men, to to just share his his joy, his peace, his glory with with everyone around us. So I would say to do that, start by just doing what God has already told you to do yeah. um, in His book, in His Word. So seek first the kingdom of God and and everything yeah. else, and His righteousness, and all I'm will be added on to you. Matthew six thirty three. Love yeah. that verse. Okay. Okay. It sure. <laughs> Um, so that 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 is my advice for someone so whether it is that you're in your single period or um you're dating you're trying to figure out relationships you're just even trying to figure out your purpose do what god God has called you to do as a child of god first Mm. and he will build onto that he'll he'll reveal to you his purpose for your life through just obedience and trusting in him so heavenly father we just want to commit everyone in your hands anyone that is out there your children that are just trying to figure out who you've called them to be what you've called them to do lord father lord we ask that you just give them the ability to just trust in you to have faith to just believe in your word to go out there and share your love with others that they should not be bound by any time of of man but understanding that in your right time in your due time that you would You will help them discover who they are, what their purpose is, what they are meant to do in this world. So, Father Lord, we just want to thank you and honor you because you are truly Lord over our lives. And by Lord, that means that you have the authority over every single aspect of who we are. So we ask that they they just give that on to you, just surrender their their timelines, surrender who they think they're supposed to be in this world and understand that they are truly a child of God and have access to your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much Thank for, you for this us. conversation. Be creative, be unique, and seek ye first the kingdom of God. What a wonderful way to end this dialogue. Thank you so much for watching. We pray that everything that was shared today manifests or or has an impact in your life. There's so much that we can learn from our discussion today, and we just pray that God opens up your heart, opens up your, your mind, to just learn what your purpose is. Be comfortable with where God has placed you and just strive to just know Christ better. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Bye, everyone.